everyone. So today we are going to start our next uh, iOS iPhone application uh, that is called a simple calculator. So here you can see so the interface of that particular calculator. Uh, very simple design. So here this particular calculator uh, has two numbers, number one, number two. And uh, for that particular numbers, we can process summation, subtraction, and division. Okay, so now how does this calculator work? For example, if I will insert uh, two numbers, number one is 10, number two is two. For example, I can perform summation. Uh, so 10 plus 20 equals 30. So here we can see the result. Uh, just pay attention on this part. So see here, where is the sum summation sign? So I can process uh, subtraction. So the sign changed to minus, answer is minus 10. And division, division is 0 0.5. From that sense, logic is very simple. So we need to read number one, we need to read number two, and process one of this among that three different operations. But here there are some extra extra coding issues what I insert into that particular application. For example, what if the first number is not given? Uh, my application must have number one, number two in order to get answer. So if one number is not given, so our application responds in this way. Insert number A. Okay, number one, so we can call it number A. It is. Let's say this is number A, this is the number B. Okay, so now if I will insert number A, but I will remove number B, so here it will say insert number B. If I will remove them both, so it is telling us please insert number A and B. Okay, now let's move back to our numbers and process the division. So division is 0 0.5. Remember that division by 0 is not possible. So what if I will place a 0 here and click the division? So and again, now our application can uh, process that particular hard case and display that the answer is not possible to present because we cannot divide by 0. So, and uh, now our target is to make that a pretty simple application in terms of the design and coding, and uh, not really simple in terms of the user uh, stability. So let's say application stability. So where our application must keep working even if the users will start make a very long uh, manipulation with our application, so the application should not crash. Always remember that when you code your own application. So any kind of action from the students should not, or any action from the users should not uh, destroy our application. So the code always must work properly. Okay, so now let's try uh, to start, so actually this application is already coded here, So, but we will start from the very beginning and we will finally create our application. So the file, new, so project, so and here that will be our iOS application, uh, next. So the application name I will call uh, simple calculator video because I already have the simple calculator I need another name okay storyboard uh, swift next okay so right here uh, I will place that particular application into the first application folder so let's create that particular application
Okay, so let's see it. Now, uh, we need to wait until all of the procedure uh, will be finished. So here it is performing some indexing. Always better to wait until everything is finished. So see, ready. Okay, now go to the storyboard. This is our app. And now let's make our application. I just want to see. Yeah, I just want to see the design, so that will be easy for you to follow what is going on. So right here, so the first what I want to insert is the simple calculator. This is the label. Okay, so click here and place our label. So, okay, so I will place it in the middle. Okay, and let's in the beginning change the font bigger one okay and this is our simple simple calculator simple calculator okay so now i need to uh, place that simple calculator Okay, remember we already discussed that uh, as long as the whole screen has a different uh, size, different like ratio in between width and hit, it is always the big challenge how to make application that will be uh, looks uh, at least similar from one Apple device to another Apple device. And there is a very simple strategy here to place that particular uh, elements in our application based on the screen center, because the screen center is always in the center. And based on that, we can uh, adjust everything in our application. Okay, so in order to get center, just click here and add two alignments, horizontally and vertically. So actually here, uh, we may try to play with the different margin so instead of zero, we can like say, okay, let's place zero and add to constraint. Okay, see now simple calculator will be placed in the center of our screen. Okay, now in order to move it, go to that ruler. This is our size inspector. Okay, and here we can see two of our constraint horizontal and uh, vertical. Okay, uh, why? Yeah, let's start from why. Okay, so now I want to move that particular simple calculator from center to some specified distance. So I want to do something similar to what is presented in my application. Okay, let's say I want to do minus 200. Okay, so then it is coming here. Uh, not much, so I want, I want I want more. So maybe minus 300. Okay, so it start moving here, but still see the distance is different. So it is uh, okay. Uh, see, this is our iPhone 11, iPhone 11. So here is the iPod Touch. Let's change to the iPhone. 11. Uh, this one doesn't change. Yeah, that's kind of the general iPhone. Uh, okay, so not mistaken here was 350. Okay, so 350, but this is located like set on the center of the screen. And I also want to move it a little bit left. 
Okay, so that's why I can change that alignment. Uh, let's say on grid. Okay. On size minus one. It's too much. See, there is here yeah, there is some distance. Okay, and I think the best will be eighty. Maybe seventy. Seventy. Okay, I think it is fifty. Okay, and now one by one, let's add all of other components uh, here. Uh, okay, so what else I want to do? Let's make it a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and I want to add a few more constraints. I want to fix width and hit margin uh, look doesn't really matter right now. Uh, okay, so the next what we will add is the label. Now the label what will present our message here. So let's uh, okay. Label. Uh, okay. So don't forget to change the title. So let's call it Notice Field. So the text for the Notice uh, Field. Okay. I will just skip some lines. So no text technically. So, because this is just the message. So finally our notice field will be will just present three lines. Uh, this is just for the simplicity. If I will play some symbols here, I can easily see it in the screen. Because if it will be empty, so it will be possible to see. Okay, so that simple calculator now has the same name as the text inside. I want to call it title label. It doesn't really matter, but okay, let's just keep it as the title label. Okay, so the next, what we will do is to add this uh, components. Okay, that is our uh, text field. Let's place it here. Uh, change the name so this is the number a number one let's call it number a okay so uh, let's make it a little bit uh, smaller so before adding any constraint, let's just add all of the elements here and we will add the constraint later for the all elements. In some sense, that will be much easier. See, the next one will be the symbol in between our two numbers. Uh, this is label. So the label, what will present So what will present operate, operator? Okay, let's call it operator. Okay, and uh, as default, let's make it plus. Okay, so the next will be that's next field. 
So what I can do, I can just copy this, com Command C, Command V. So this is another digit. Okay, so this is not number A, this is the number B. Again, now right now there is no any constraint, it's just elements one by one. Okay, and the next one will be another label. Another label. Uh, okay, so it doesn't really matter the name. We, ne we will never change it. This is equal. Okay, command V. Remember, I copy the so the edit text te text field okay so in the last one so here we will display the result so number a okay number result this is just the title so the number result okay, done and now three buttons so three uh, button. So that will be a button uh, summation. Button summation. Okay. Uh, we can uh, uh, keep it same. Or just rename it as the button summation. As long as we are going to rename them, so that should not be a big deal. Okay, so now I can just copy that widget like Control C, Command C, Command V. Okay, so this is our second button. That will be the button uh, subtraction. And uh, here, instead of summation, I supposed to write subtraction. Subtraction. Okay, command V. And that one will be our uh, division. Something like this. So this is the button. Division. Okay, and let's change division. Okay, so done. So now what I will need to do is to connect all of my items in my application. So because up to now I connect only the simple calculator. So now that will be quite hard to predict where the compiler will place my object. So the constraint is very important in our application. So this is our first one. So just click here to add the constraint. As long as the simple calculator is already presented, this is our title label. So we can just connect all of our elements to the simple calculator. Save area. Okay, the width, uh, the length. Okay, see the container for this particular notice. See, it can be different. The size can be bigger. So that's why, uh, in order to solve all of the problem, just let's do not make any constraint for the width and height. So that can be changed during the like when we run our application. So add those two constraint. Now we can see it two two constraint. Edit. Uh, same for our the first number, so the number A. So see the notice field. So this is this is the notice field. So the notice field and save area. Uh, okay. So again. 
uh, for the numbers better to keep it in width because if they will be connected each other so they may do have overlapping so let's just keep like keep the size freeze the container for the numbers so this one okay so the next one is our uh, operator sign okay so the title is fine Okay, so here will be number A. See now they just start connected one each other. Okay, so here let's con uh, keep the size as long as our uh, operator will be changed, like from plus minus and divide. So here we can uh, pick. Okay, uh, I need to do it again. So, uh, compiler will add constraint if you will click that button add for constraint. So, click here. So, now the all constraint inserted. So, same here. Click that one. So, just See, when you enable the constraint, so that particular part uh, change the color. So as default, there is no any constraint. Okay, so keep size, add constraint. So for the equal. Okay, so here equal will never change, so that's why we can just skip it as usual. Okay, and okay, see, and the last one we can connect only to the safe area. Yeah, this is the drawback. Now, okay, as long as result may also be different, so let's freeze the size at the constraint. So now the constraint for all of those elements are inserted. Now let's do the same for our buttons. So okay, make sure that you are not missing the constraint. Each item in our application must have minimum two constraints. Okay, for the buttons, as long as I will never change them, so we can add only to constraint. So the constraint uh, will tell compiler so how to connect our item. See the subtraction will be connected to the button summation and here to the to the safe area to the right border like left border of our screen safe area. Okay so Constraint and division. Button okay. subtraction. Safe area. Add to constraint. Okay, done. So uh, this part is finished. So technically, design is done. So now what I can do, let's run our application and uh, right here we will see our, our application. So in order to see a tool application, actually what we can do, we can change the mobile phone type and our compiler will run to, uh, okay, see here now everything is presented, so summation, subtraction, division. Uh, nothing works because we did not code it yet. Uh, there is no numbers inside, which is drawback in the beginning. Uh, so let's add some numbers. For example, let's say that as default, so the number A is 10 and number B is 20. 
So we will just add text into our text fields. So as default, that will create uh, some numbers. So the later it will help us uh, to process our operation, arithmetic operation, without kind of much complexity. And later we will start talking about how to add notice if something is wrong. So what is next? Uh, let's go back to the coding. Okay, so now I think we can move our application back to the full screen. And uh, do what? Okay, so I don't need this anymore. And enable assistant. Okay, so now we need to uh, code the items in our application. Okay, so now let's see what will happen. Simple application label, I will never change and that will be the same as always like in our application. So, but what item I will have to modify? See, uh, this one, the notice. So the notice uh, will not be always that like three particular minus. Sometimes that's supposed to display something is wrong. So it means that the data must be accessible. That widget must be accessible in our application. Okay, so that's why for the widget notice, so we will make uh, Okay, if something going wrong like this, uh, command Z will move the object back. Okay, so highlight the object, keep control, and by mouse, just move it here into the view controller. So that will uh, give us the outlet connection. So here I will call it notice. So see in our application, that label title, label ID is the notice field, but inside of our view controller, the same label will be connected with the name notice. And through the notice, I can get, and I can modify that particular widget, the text inside of that label. So finally, that will create IB outlet like this. Okay, what next? Uh, will be modified. So this part, isn't it? So the text field, so I will need to read data from that particular part. So let's call it number, number A. Connect. Okay, so this plus is not always plus, so that can be minus or divide, so that's why that one must be connected as well. So this is our operator. I need to change the name, I cannot use the same name, so that's why let's call it operator sign. Sign. Plus minus divide, no, not really same symbol. Operator symbol. Connect. Okay, so this one, control, then move here. So that one will be our number so B. Okay, and uh, we do have the last one. This is our result. So here I supposed to again present my result. So the number can be changed. So that's why it's here. And that one is uh, number result. Let's call it result. result. Okay, so now we do have number A, notice, number A, operator symbol, number B, result. 
all of the widget what uh, will be modified in our application we already connect uh, through the IP outlet so now those particular items will be accessible uh, can be accessible and can be modified inside of our code in our application so there are three buttons for the each button we need to build the function so which will process uh, the different different manipulation with our button okay so again keep control and now we need to add action insert action so con connection is action so here instead of any that will be button and name let's say that will be the click sum so we want to do the summation so click sum uh, same let's do for the subtraction click sub subtraction so always change to the unique button connect okay and there is one more control last button uh, click divide button. Connect. okay so done so now there are three functions connected to our application and now if I will click the summation so compiler will start doing the coding here perfect so and so on now how can I do the calculation Technically, what I need is to first read two numbers. Okay, let's do it one by one. Like step step one. So what do I need to do is to convert text to decimal decimal numbers. So why do we need to do that kind of conversation? This uh, 10 and 20 now, this is the string text. But I want to do the arithmetical operation, 10 plus 20. This is not text, this is the number. So that's why I will need to get those text and convert it into the uh, numbers. So in order to uh, do this, I will have to enable a few different uh, variables so as long as we do have two numbers and two strings two text components which present our numbers let's make uh, two different uh, variables so the var uh, let's call the number a string okay so let's specify this is the string Uh, in the Swift, so the var uh, will identify the variables. So the next one is the variable's name, name a string. Uh, two dots uh, will specify what exact variables we are trying to call. And this is the string. And let's make it empty. So we need uh, two variables like this another one will be the number b string and it is also empty okay now uh, as long as i do have uh, decimal numbers i will need to process the decimal operation so we also need uh, two uh, technically three different variables uh, to keep and process the calculation for our simple calculator I can call it like a number a decimal okay so that one will be float and as default let's just make it zero now command c command b so the same I will do for number b so we need see 10 is the text now now i need next what i will need to do is to convert the text 10 into the number a decimal which will be the number 10 
So the number 10, I can process and process the different manipulation uh, as a number. So I can do the subtraction, summation, division, and everything else. I cannot do it with text. Okay, and there is one more uh, number here, which is our result. So the result will be the either summation of those two, division or subtraction. Okay, so the all variables we assign. So the next, what we will need to do is to like process the convertation. So the first, what uh, what we can do, as long as we design the string, like number a uh, string. So now I can assign that number a string. What is that? Uh, so number a string is located in this particular widget. This is what? This is our number a. So we call it number a in our application. So that's why I can do this like number A, this is the text field widget where I do have a text a 10. So number A dot text. Okay. Uh, sometimes that cause uh, this cannot convert type, which is actually strange because actually text must be string. We can like add the sign and as default that solve our problem. As long as I do have two strings, so let's do the same for our number B. So the number B is located in the uh, number number B uh, text field, so done. So now I do have a text uh, 10 and 20, which is the number A string, number B string. So uh, in order to complete uh, step one, I will need to convert that particular numbers. So uh, number A decimal is what? So this is the float number, so float number taken from num a string. Okay, and the same we can do with the number b. Number b. So step one is finished. So technically. Okay, see this mistake? Uh, actually, in order to resolve it, let's do this. Add let. So let be this number a decimal. Uh, be that part. Okay, so the next, what we can do, like step two, step two, Process summation. So see what is what is happening here. So now the number a decimal, number b decimal is the decimal numbers, and now I can easily do like number result decimal equal number a decimal plus number b decimal. Okay, see here there are two versions uh, with the question sign and without. Better to choose without.
Okay, so now it start showing error. You see, because of the same problem, so that particular uh, qu question uh, part. So number a decimal. See here, there are two versions with the question and without. So if it doesn't help, so just uh, make that sign. So and that sign uh, will ignore such kind of mistake. Yeah, sometimes it's help. So finally, our number result is small. So that will be the number sorty. But that number sorty is presented in the computer memory. So that's why we need step three. A convert result to text and display. So we did it the last time already. So uh, in order to uh, do that, uh, so what 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 we need is to call our result. So result is um, this. So CI is supposed to display the sorty here. So that particular widget is our uh, number result. So and this is connected uh, in our application and we call it result. So if I will get access to the result, so I will display data here in the third widget. So that's why uh, let's do this. Okay, so the result, this is our widget dot uh, text. So means that I supposed to display it here. So now uh, I cannot display uh, integer. So I can display only text. So that's why in order to convert uh, decimal numbers into the uh, text string or floating numbers actually now it is floating numbers any numbers into the text so we can use the common string so and if here I will add my uh, number result decimal so that uh, should display the result into our uh, third widget result Okay, so and now let's try to do it. Okay, so everything what we must uh, code to process summation, so we already did. So now if I will click summation, now we can see result here. So in a similar manner, I can just repeat everything what I did for the uh, click sum and uh, do it for the subtraction and uh, division. Okay. I don't need those uh, steps because they are identical. So there is nothing different if I will do the subtraction. So what will be the different? Uh, so here instead of plus, I supposed to place minus because I will do the subtraction. Okay. And here I supposed to place divide. Done. Okay, so now let's run it again. So now my application should be able to process all so summation, subtraction, and division. Okay, summation 30, subtraction minus 10, division 0 0.5. So uh, that is working. Uh, what did we miss? 
See here, even if I perform division, so the sign here did not change. So it is still plus. So the operator symbol uh, did not change. So it means that, uh, remember, uh, I already set up that particular operator symbol, so that, that widget, but we did not use it. So copy. So and every time when I call summation, so here I can just set up text as plus. So if I will do a subtraction, so that will be minus, and here divide. So pretty simple. So and again now if I will check. It's supposed to work. Okay. Summation, subtraction, division. So now you can see uh, that part. Okay, so the main part is finished. And the next, what we will need to do is to perform the notice. So the notice uh, will not be really simple. Yes. Okay. So this is our reference. So if it is 20, summation is working. See, if there is no number one, so let's discuss what is happening here. See, this is my number A. So here, no problem. Ah, stop this subtraction. Summation. So see, this is the number A. If there is no number here, so my number A string will be empty, no data. The problem will happen here. So if I will try to make a decimal number from empty string, so that will definitely crush my application. So in order to prevent application against crashing, so we will have to check whenever the text is inserted here or not. So if text is inserted, uh, we can process uh, all of our mathematical operations. So if not, uh, we will need to just make a message like here. Sorry, operation is not possible. Please insert number A. So as it is displayed here. Okay, now, uh, where do I need to sub like process that? Uh, before converting our text to numbers, so we will need to check if, so if our number A string Okay, now what? So the number a string dot is empty. So if it is empty, this is true. So, but in our case, that's supposed to be opposite. So if this particular text field is not empty, so in order to uh, convert the convert the logic, so actually what I need to do is to add that particular sign here. So that sign means not. So this part it's okay. I miss bracket. So, if it is not empty, I will do this. 
Uh, but here there is another problem. For example, that part also can be empty, isn't it? So uh, number can be inserted into the uh, field one, but the like field A, number A, but number B may also be empty. So that's why here we'll get the message, another message, insert number B. So it means that in order to process the calculation, I must have the situation where number A and number B is not empty or are not empty. So that's why my condition must be must contains two parts. So number A string is not empty and and my number number B string is B string dot is empty and that's supposed to be also not okay so if number a is not empty if number b is not empty so we can process that particular calculation okay now uh, so what will happen if So if both of them not empty, so I will convert my string, my text into the numbers, process I the summation here on the summation, display the result, change the symbol. Okay, perfect. Works. But uh, so here, so we we have to play with else. Because if my calculation is not possible, so now I will need to uh, tell the users what is going on. Okay, so that's why here again will be the condition if. So if my number a string is empty. Okay, so if number A string is empty, so means that I supposed to insert B. Uh, okay, uh, let's come back here. I will delete both of them because that will be easy to see. See, if I don't have both numbers, so the application will tell me, please insert number A and B. So let's play with this uh, functionality first. So means that again, I supposed to have two conditions. So if number A string is empty and number uh, B string is empty. So compared to this statement, see here, I don't have not because if both of them not empty, I will do the calculation. But if both of them empty, so it means that uh, I will have to display uh, some data uh, here. So now how to display uh, the data? So we do have a notice. Remember we made a notice. Notice. So this is the widget associated like the notice widget which is called notice in our uh, view controller. So it means that if here I will like tell notice B text, so text of notice equal, so and here I can just add what is the text of that particular notice. Uh, insert number A and B. Okay, so that will be exactly the same what is displayed right now. Okay, so that, that will be our first condition. So now, else if, so will be, that can be the situation when uh, both of them empty, first empty, second end empty. So if both of them, uh, Let's say, see, if I come here, so means that where is the one 
among three possible situations, both empty, okay, right here, case one, case one, like both, the numbers, empty, this condition, or we can come to that condition. So here, what will we do? Case two. Number A empty. And here I can see number A string is empty. So if number A string is empty, so my notice my notice uh, will be please insert number eight. Okay, the other condition I don't really need to specify because again there are only three possible cases. So here will be the case three number B is empty. Okay, so in here, I just supposed to specify that instead of number A, that's supposed to be number B. Okay, now, what is going on in my application? So if both of my string, where I display the text, let's say 10 and 20, they are both are not empty, so I will convert uh, the text into the decimal numbers, process the calculation, display the result. Now, uh, what if one of them or both of them are not empty? So we are coming to the else. And here will be the three possible cases. Both numbers are, are empty. So this condition. So in that case, I will display insert number A and B. Second case, number A is empty. There is no this number. Like this. So I will display insert number A. Or you may have a situation when the number B is empty. And here I will see the situation. Please insert number B. Okay. So and now this is the complete version for the summation, like how to deal with the all possible different uh, cases. Now, now let's uh, launch our current the current application and let's see how does it work. So for summation that should be fine. So the summation we are already caught. Okay, so now we can perform summation. So now if I will delete number one. So it is saying, please insert number A again. So now we are here. This is our case two, where the number A string is empty. So now if I will add 10 and we'll remove 20. So now it will be the case three, because now my number B is empty. Okay, so now if I will delete both, so that will be our case one where the both numbers are empty. And now we can see that particular uh, case, the response for that case in our application. So this part is done. So what I need to do is to just duplicate everything what I did here for the summation to the subtraction and division because everything will be identical uh, except uh, like mathematical operation. So I can copy this part. Uh, this is our subtraction. Place, place it here and uh, modify it. So here instead of plus, it will be minus. 
minus. And do the same for the division. So change operator to divide and sign to divide. Okay. I can run it now and make sure that everything is working fine without problem. Okay, so summation, subtraction, division. So if I delete first number, summation, subtraction, division. Looks so have here delete number two. Summation, subtraction, division. Okay, there is one uh, small drawback here. See, uh, I still can see the result from the previous calculation, even if uh, now that particular uh, calculation is not correct. So, uh, what uh, we can do here for the each case, so before doing the calculation, so what we can do is to text for the result. Result, this is the widget responsible for our third number. Uh, text, make it empty. So now, if the result will, will not be possible, like if it will not be possible to calculate our Like process summation, subtraction, and substitution. So the result uh, will be empty. So there will be no text in that particular particular part. Okay. Okay. Now summation thirty. If I will delete number one. Summation, so and as long as I cannot process the summation, so the result uh, will disappear. Okay, so summation, so please insert V, subtraction, division. Okay, and now if I will delete both, summation, subtraction, division. Okay, so now the all conditions, what we discuss is implemented and they are working. So and there is only one uh, uh, missed component. So if I, uh -huh, okay, I cannot process the division. Let's say I want to do like five division, then five divide equal to. Okay, now if I will play zero, so it's compiler doesn't crash. So it is showing. There is the infinity because uh, technically we cannot divide by zero. So in, in the division, uh, we can uh, add one more condition uh, here. So even if I can divide, so the zero is still number. So it is not empty. So if here is empty, so I cannot divide, insert number B. So, but if I will insert number B as zero, so the division is still not possible. So it means that here, uh, so when we define uh, number B, so we can add one more condition. See, this is the division, click division. So here we can set up like if a number B decimal Uh, not equal uh, zero. So process the calculation. But if it is zero, so means that I cannot divide. So and uh, notice uh, text uh, will be modified and now that will be uh, cannot divide by zero. 
So, and that will be the last uh, modification what we can do in our application. So, and let's see how does it looks like. So, we already check everything. So, now if I will divide, so here place a zero. So, it is telling us cannot divide by zero. And instead of infinity, so here we have nothing. Okay, so that's all for the simple calculator uh, today. So we discussed quite many different things. So even if the logic is pretty simple, so here you can see in order to make application which is like user friendly, which will not crash uh, if something is not uh, given. So we will need to like code some extra part which will prevent our application against some against some unacceptable uh, crashes. So and this application is like completed now. So everything is working. Yeah. Please implement it by yourself. Make sure that everything is fine. So for sure we we, we can discuss the details about that application in the classroom. So, and good luck.